regard you know, defamation cases as maybe the, the most important or the most uh, profound cases there are because we only get one reputation and you don't get a second chance once it's destroyed. To have your reputation destroyed is really to ruin everything about you. It ruins you, it ruins your family's view of you, it, it ruins your neighbor's view of you. You go to a party, you don't know who's looking at you sideways because they heard, you know, you're a this or you're a that. It is an extraordinarily difficult thing to live with. And for that reason, when we represent defamation clients, uh, it really is the most profound type case we could be handling. Welcome to the Jacob Halftime Show presented by Paquetto and Lens. I'm Devin Caney coming to you from Ocean Casino Resort, joined by Mark Farzetta live from Philadelphia. Uh, Mark, start to Eagles Bears, definitely not what I think anyone expected. Uh, Eagles do lead 10 to 6 at the half. What are your thoughts so far? Uh, Jalen Hurts just played the worst half of football we have seen from him this season, yet somehow magically he has a 100-yard receiver already and the Eagles' only touchdown. I don't know how that makes sense, but it makes sense. It's what happens, it's what happens when a really, really good football team, like the best team in the NFL, plays one of the worst teams in the NFL. You can get away with a lot of stuff, especially two first-half interceptions, which are so far out of character for Jalen Hurts, not even funny. But still, they find a way to overcome, and the 10-6 to 6 lead at the half is the most important thing above all else. And again, that's thanks to Jalen Hurts' only touchdown and the Eagles' only touchdown of that first half. But hopefully they got all that under their system, and it's all Eagles from here on out. Let's cross our fingers for that in the second half. Yeah, in terms of play calling as well, uh, definitely a lot more passing than I expected. I thought Miles Sanders was going to get a lot more action earlier in the game. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I have no – there's no excuse whatsoever – for Jalen Hurt, or excuse me, for Miles Sanders' first touch of the game to come with 6:40 left in the second quarter. I don't care how great your passing game, how high your passing game has been flying over the last couple of weeks. You give the ball to Miles Sanders before the 6:40 mark of the second. There's no excuses there. I understand you got to see that there's RPOs aren't working for the Eagles like they have in weeks past. Uh, Matt Eberflus has done a phenomenal job. It looks like preparing for those. So the uh, old-fashioned handoff. To, by the way, the guy having not only a career year, but the fifth leading rusher in the entire NFL, Miles Sanders, has to wait that long to get involved in the game plan. No excuse for that whatsoever. I'm, I'm almost positive you're going to see a lot more of that in the second half. More of Miles Sanders, that is. Yeah, well, hopefully, uh, all right, Mark Marzetta, thank you so much. Hopefully uh, we see more of Miles Sanders and more scoring and less interceptions uh, from this Eagles offense in the second half in Chicago. Uh, if you're tuning in, stick around because we have John McMullen joining us live with an update from Soldier Field. But first, here's a message from our partners at Mark's Jewelers. Guys, if you need to buy a loved one, significant other, mom, dad, brother, sister, whoever it is, a gift for Christmas, Mark's Jewelers is the place to go. You can save up to $2,500. Tell them Devin sent you. Head in there. There's only a few more days before the holidays hit. Uh, great gifts all around at Mark's. So, John McMullen coming up after this message. Uh, yeah. I'm joined by John McMullen live from Soldier Field. Uh, John, kind of a frustrating first half for the Eagles to say the least. Uh, what are your biggest takeaways? Um, kind of how I expected it to go, Devin. You really? Know, I, I mentioned on the pregame show, uh, coaches hate that term trap game so i rebranded a human nature game uh i i expected to see this sort of blow from the eagles but the bears can't take advantage of it they just don't have enough talent you saw justin fields now tremendous phenomenal runner 
but no pocket awareness whatsoever. The Eagles got five sacks. They might have ten by the time this game is over. Um, he's really all the Bears have offensively. Uh, the Eagles struggled themselves offensively. Obviously, this was the worst performance of Jalen Hurts, uh, certainly in the first half, uh, with the two interceptions, two poor throws, two very uncharacteristic throws, Devin. But all of a sudden, the one one of the great things about Jalen, he doesn't let bad plays affect him. Uh, in late in the first half, he dropped it in the bucket to Devontae Smith took advantage of one of the most telegraph blitzes that I've ever seen from the Chicago Bears and, and, and scored the touchdown. And all of a sudden, the Eagles have the lead. Um, and I expect them to slowly pull away in the second half. Uh, so it was a struggle. But again, if you want to have a lull, this is the place to have a lull because Chicago just can't take advantage of it. Yeah, I like a human nature game. Is that kind of what you chalk up the two interceptions? And then also, like in terms of play calling, Miles Sanders didn't see the ball until over halfway through the second quarter here, where we thought that Miles Sanders and even Jalen Hurts were going to be running all over the Chicago Bears team. Yeah, and, and Jalen had the big run, obviously, on the quarterback draw when he saw the blitz for the touchdown. But, yeah, Miles didn't touch it till 641 left in the uh, second quarter. Um, and that, that you know, that's got to stop. Now, the Eagles didn't have – it was one of those time of possession games, Devin, early. They had the football, I think, for two, minute, uh, two minutes and ten seconds in the first quarter. Um, so they didn't have it a lot. Uh, that's going to be Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen's explanation. In the whole first half, they only had it for eight minutes and 50 seconds. So I do expect the Eagles to sort of lean on the offensive line of Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts in the running game in the second half. Now, defensively, they are getting home uh, to Justin Fields. What is your evaluation of the defensive performance so far? Yeah, I mean, the, the pass rush has been great. Hassan Reddick had the strip sack, and he should have had three sacks. He had uh, Fields dead to rights when he made the big run as well. So they're going to get home against this quarterback because he holds on to the football, and he takes big losses when he does get sacked. Now, that that's the good. The bad is occasionally he'll break out. You saw that spectacular run, but that's not something you could sort of lean on foundationally as an offense. So, you know, Chicago just doesn't have many weapons right now. They just don't have the talent. I expect the Eagles to continue to get home in, in the pass rush. They won't need the blitz, and that's a good thing because you need to be careful. You need to spy uh, – uh, Justin Fields a little bit. Well, hopefully they do that, and hopefully uh, we get more going offensively in the second half. John McMullen will be joining us again live on the Pond the Hockey post game show right after uh, Eagles at Bears wraps up. Uh, John, thank you so much, and thank you for tuning in to the Jacob Media uh, halftime report. I'm Devin Caney from Ocean Casino Resort. Regard, you know, defamation cases as maybe the the most important or the most uh, profound cases there are because we only get one reputation, and you don't get a second chance once it's destroyed. To have your reputation destroyed is really to ruin everything about you. It ruins you. It ruins your family's view of you. It it ruins your neighbor's view of you. You go to a party, you don't know who's looking at you sideways because they heard, you know, you're a this or you're a that. It is an extraordinarily difficult thing to live with. And for that reason, when we represent defamation clients, uh, it really is the most profound type case we could be handling.